was going to say something else. Yeah. Huh. She could stick out her tongue and wash her eyes. I was going to say, look your ears. That? Well, that's <laughs> next. Do you ever get a fly in your ear? A mosquito? So that is a young female okapi. On the other side, I have a very young yellow-backed diker. So the okapi is... The little bird's going, ah, oh, my eyeballs. Yeah. 
He's hiding in the bushes. Safari guide today through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. You guys ready to have a safari? Yeah! Oh, that didn't sound very good. You guys falling asleep on me? Just had your lunch, right? You just ate some pizza safari or Tusker House or Dole Whip. You're going in your food comas. All right, so, all right. I'm going to hit every pothole out here. I'm going to wake you guys up, okay? All right, so hang on tight. We're going over some really rough road and rough brush. Everybody, when you find your seat, okay, please stay in it. Everybody stay seated during the whole trip. We're going over some really rough road out here, okay? Not kidding. Rule number two, hang on tight to all your valuable items, cameras, cell phones, wallets, favorite children. <gasps> Yeah, you big families got a hard decision to make, okay? Reserve warning says that we can't stop for anything or anyone if they happen to fall out of the truck. Okay. All right, and it's going to be really long two weeks before you see them or get them back. And by the time you get it back, it's probably not going to look that great because we're not going to look that great either. All right, so if you love them, hang on tight. And rule number three is have fun, okay? You guys ready to have some fun? All right, here we go. If you guys look way back there in that back corner, okay, we can see it best from this on the bottom of the water and they can push themselves up with great force so they pop up out of nowhere. So just keep an eye out there. Now, these big gray birds right here, they aren't on the menu though, because hippopotamus are herbivores and they only eat plants, but this is Paradise Island. It's where all my love birds hanging out. Yeah, these big gray birds that look like Nigel from Finding Nemo are the peaked back pelicans. And they get their names because during mating season, their backs turn a pretty shade of pink in order to attract partners. Oh, la la, yeah. All right, let's see. A lot of black vultures drying out on my guardrail, but they're gonna get a little bit too close to the Nile crocodile pit. Look at this, everybody. They're the longest of their species, the Nile crocodiles. Woo! Yeah. About 20 feet, tip of nose to tip of tail. Look at this big one right here. Oh boy. Now, if you ever catch one with their mouth, it'd be kind of like that big guy over there. That's a way that they cool their body off with a really big smile. Yeah, they let out all the hot air through those big jaws and then snap them shut with about 2,000 pounds worth of force. So, woo! Looks super playful. Yeah. Getting a back scratch. Now, these are the African wild dogs or the painted dogs, but they're not to be mistaken for a coyote or a hyena or a dingo, though they do look similar. Looks like someone took a paintbrush painted all over their backs with black and white. Now, I hear a few of y'all saying, oh, so cute. Yeah, let's go on belly up. Pfft, no, no. Ferocious animals, okay? Wild dogs are the number one hunter in all of Africa and eight times the predator of a lion. <laughs> so you don't want to snuggle up to one like you do fluffy on your couch. Now, that is a mandrel, everyone. And mandrels are the largest monkeys in the world. Yep, just like old Rafiki from The Lion King. Yep. All right, let's get back around here and visit this little tiny elephant. So mama can't be too far away, right? Yeah. Now, when we find elephants that are traveling all by themselves, say to assume that it's probably going to be a little baby boy. This angle. But I got some pretty cool birds right here on the left side. These are the greater flamingos tallest and lightest pink of the flamingo family. Now they're not as hot pink as the flamingos in your yards or at the dollar store, but they're still a pretty shade. Do you guys remember how flamingos turn pink? Oh yeah, he's scratching himself. Yeah, from shrimp and woo, are they stinky today. Woo. Ooh, the stinkiest flamingos I've ever smelled. Ugh. Yeah, that shrimp diet of theirs, lots of krill, crustaceans, help them turn pink from the beta carotene, that very special vitamin, all right? And it changes their color. Now, beta carotene is different from keratin and a rhino horn, and we're heading towards rhino country. All right, let's see. We're gonna look for some white rhinos in here. They're a lot bigger than the black rhino that we spotted a little bit early in the tree, but 
You know what? I got another endangered species right here on your left, in front of us, leftish side. These are the Bontabak. And the Bontabak are relatives of the wildebeest, and they're really, really beautiful. When the sun hits them just right, their pretty brown coats almost shine purple, like a deep violet. And they were so beautiful, in fact, that they were hunted almost nearly to extinction. There was records to be shown that there were only 17 Bontabak left in the entire world until conservationists put them on reserves like this one. Today, they are considered extinct out in the wild, but you can find them in zoos and reserves like this one, and the count of Bontabak is about 2,000, which is not great. It's better, but, you know, it's kind of sad that we had to take that animal out of its natural environment. There's a crazy ostrich down there, down that trail, okay? That is my arch nemesis I'm going to introduce you to her later. She doesn't like me very much, I'll tell you why. Or if you got down on the ground with me, it's actually huge. Yeah, now we call a group of rhinos a crash because they have horrible eyesight and they're pretty much blind. Crash into a lot of stuff. So there's your white rhino heading off over there. And here are the two cheetahs. Look, everybody, they're pretty close and visible right now. This is awesome. There's the fastest land mammal running 0 to 60 miles per hour in almost three seconds. Oh, it's going to go over there, cuddle her sister. So you need a bath. I got you, girl. Cheetah girls, cheetah sisters, hairdo time. All right, so cheetahs don't have retractable claws. All right, their claws are going to be out all the time, like a soccer or a football cleat. Helps them dig into the dirt and run really, really fast. And they use that long tail of theirs like a steering wheel, like a boat rudder. They swish it left and right when they want to change direction. There's another one, if you guys look closely, right here in the corner, just in front of the bush. Look for that flat golden body right here, right here in front of the trees. There you go. Taking a little cat nap. Now, unlike the other big cat, though, a cheetah doesn't have the ability to roar. No, they only have a little chirping vocalization. Kind of sounds like a bark from a chihuahua, like it's not ferocious at all. No, but they are the only cat that can still purr. Isn't that funny? Yeah, cheetahs can purr but cannot roar. However, I do know a really big cat who loves to roar. So thank you for your patience and thanks for working with me as we move forward slowly. Maybe an animal will get in the middle of the road for us and show off a little bit. It's probably those ostriches. They're really, really bad. They misbehave a lot. Okay, let's see. So these are the Kofi rocks, everybody. And the lions like to climb up here, use them like tanning beds and vantage points where they can kind of look over the kingdom and, you know, decide when they're going to go hunting, if they're going to go hunting, because they're pretty lazy. They're actually going to be inactive or resting for about 18 to 20 hours of the day. Yeah, they like to come out during the night time. That's when their eyesight improves six times stronger than a human's. Yeah, I made some really good hunters or predators. Look, see, they already had a snack right over there on the right. Let's see, let's get around this corner, see what we can find. Yep, those ostriches, they gathered an army. They're being bad. Looks like our friends, they're pointing at something over here, so looks like they see something. All right, we're gonna look for the pride of lions. And the female lions, they're going to be the hunters of the pride. Do all the hunting. Oh, look, there she is. Yeah, everybody, look over here. You can see them from the top of the rock. Ooh, there's white rhinos over here. Yeah, lots of white rhinos. There's lots of stuff to look at. Now she's kind of looking up now right, as the trucks pull around. Miss Lazy Bones, what you doing? While the big male stays up there and protects the cubs on the rocks, all right, he's actually laying really, really flat to the ground right behind her. You can see the tuft of his mane as we pull around the corner. So I'm going to pull around the corner just a little bit right here. All right, you guys grab a picture of the pretty lioness face. And there, oh, she's like, ooh, birds. Snack or derbs. Yeah, there's the big male lion. There you go. And there's another lion. Now, do you guys remember what the Swahili word for lion is? Simba. Simba, that's right. Good job. Simba is Swahili for lion on my Diz nerds. And that means that Mufasa is the most unoriginal parent in the entire world. Yep.
to protect themselves in case any predators get the bright idea to come by and try to attack them. Now, if you guys look closely, warthogs actually have two sets of tusks. They have an upper level and a lower level. The upper level is the ones that kind of curl up and they're very sharp. Okay, those are the digging tusks. They make all the holes and then their lower level kind of poke out almost like a spike. And that's their protective or defense mechanism. Warthogs. Yep. All right. Let's see. Looks like the ostriches are being da bad down here, causing a little traffic. All right. And all of these ostriches, if you can see them, there's probably three or four, maybe five sprinkled in here. They're all female. And the leader of the flock of ostriches does not like me. I told you I was going to tell you why. That's because she gets really mad when I tell all my friends that her brain is the same size as her eyeball. Which is true. An ostrich brain is about two and a half inches long. So every time she sees me, she chases after me about 45 miles an hour and I can only go eight. So it's just really not good. Is that on the prowl out there? All right, so my warden is coming over the radio right now. She's saying that at an animal is out in the middle of the road just around this corner and blocking the ride path so she's got to get out of the truck and course them out of the road so we're just going to hold right here